for the last part of this lecture, um, I want to discuss a little bit about uh, pre-911 aviation security. So despite aviation was the last transportation mode to be developed because, because it's more advanced than uh, maritime transportation and land transportation, it has the highest profile with respect to security measures because we, we usually consider that aircraft is the safest um, vehicle compared to cars, trucks, or ships because it's hard to attack an aircraft due to its high level uh, security um, defending system. And uh, um, today, if you want to attack an aircraft, civil aircraft, it will be very difficult, especially after 9-11. So there are different types of highest level uh, security measures applied to airports and airplanes. But, but if you succeeded in attacking an aircraft, especially civil aircraft, the casualties will be a lot and uh, the political impact will be large the attention you draw from medias will be large. So aircraft is, uh, I will not say the best target for terrorist attacks, but um, just like 911, right? If you uh, succeed in attacking um, a civil aircraft, then the impact is huge. Then the impact is huge. So here um, on the left side, we have several I would say drawings, not uh, photos, right? Balloon flight designs from 19th century. And then we have modern uh, aircraft like this. Uh, first flight of Wright Flyer in 1903. And Wright Brothers, they are from Ohio, right? And then um, Boeing 707, the first jet powered commercial vehicle. Um, the first flight of Boeing 707 um, was in 1953 or 1957, but yeah, in 1950s, okay? And uh, documented attacks on airplane can be dated back to 1933. And during 1960 to 1974, hijacking wave, there was a hijacking wave uh, due to sharp uh, deterioration in relations between Cuba and the US, okay? By 2000, most of them are hijackings for political or economic reasons. So here is a figure showing aviation terrorism incidents from 1970 to 2000, okay? You can say that from 1970 to 1980, there was a trend um, of, of hijacking airplanes and the peak can be found in 1980. And after that, um, this trend changed a lot because the number of incidents dropped dramatically, uh, except for uh, 1992 and 1993, I think, uh, ex except for those uh, two or three years, uh, the, in the number of incidents dropped a lot. And uh, the peak, the peak year uh, is 1980. There were around 60, less than 60, but very close to 60 incidents. Okay, um, terrorist attacks on airplanes in that year. Okay, but even with this high number of incidents, if we compare aviation terrorism incident, incidents to land transportation terrorism incidents, um, still land transportation wins. Because even for that peak year, 1980, less than 70 attacks on airplanes, right? In the same year, more than 100 terrorist attacks happened in land transportation systems, okay? Okay, so you, you be careful with the scale of the vertical axis here. It's from zero to 50 to 100 to 150, okay? In 1992, 
uh, more than 300 attacks were carried out on land transportation systems. And here, the max value is still less than 70. So land transportation systems, okay, they are, they are main targets of terrorist attacks, okay? So um, FAA, uh, U.S. Federal Aviation Administration, they issue, they issue uh, something called a criminal acts against civil aviation, uh, civil aviation every year since 1986. And according to this report, uh, the 1995 edition, in the decade of uh, 1986 to 1995. 179 hijackings, which account for 30% of all um, attacks. There were 179 hijackings during that decade, and only 14 of them were with political or terrorist motives. So the rest of them uh, were mainly about uh, ransom, okay, economic reasons. And uh, 171 attacks at air at off airport facilities could be uh, warehouses for uh, for for aviation cargoes or um, other related facilities, but not in the airport. Okay, not when the the the, the airplane was flying, and uh, 108 attacks at airports, 58 attacks on general or charter aviation, okay? 41 shootings at aircraft, okay? Including missiles, uh, martyrs, um, I think for this part, they are military attacks, right? Military, at least military level attacks and automatic weapons, et cetera, okay? So, a total of 21 bombings, attempt bombings or shootings on board. It's a very small portion of, 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 of aviation attacks, right? Or uh, attacks on aviation. Least in number, but caused most casualties and uh, most consequential impact on aviation security. So only 3% of attacks on aircraft was about bombings, um, attempt bombings or shooting on board, but the impact was the largest. So like I said before, attacking uh, aviation transportation uh, system is hard, is difficult, especially after 9-11, but if it was a success one, successful one, the impact is huge and uh, attention would be huge. And that was usually something a terrorist wants, impact and attention. And yeah, one more, characters, okay? So some examples here, um, we'll, say, we'll not say examples, some history here and, and some events. The bombing of Pan AM 103 flight, um, it has another name. This uh, this uh, incident also has another name. It's called um, Lockerbie bombing. You may have heard that before. So specifically on December 21st of 1988, Pan American Flight 103 suffered a catastrophic explosion shortly after departing London for New York City. And uh, this incident killed 243 passengers and 16 crew members. Most of them were US citizens. Crushed aircraft killed another 11 individuals of Lockerbie. So Lockerbie is, um, is, a, uh, is a region in, in England, okay, in, in, in England. And the bomb placed on aircraft in Frankfurt. So um, this is this city is in Germany, right? An explosive hidden in cassette player. We don't use cassette players today, but um, you should know it's just like a tape. A, um, a cassette is 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 a box for 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 music tape or um, or some tape, 
you can use a player to to play the music. Uh, back in 1990s and the 1980s, um, cassette player was something people used to to appreciate music mainly. Okay, and a terrorist attack. Uh, it was a terrorist attack uh, perpetrated by Libyan nationals. Of course, the target was um, American, uh, U.S. property, and U.S. Uh, citizens. Most catastrophic terrorist attack on U.S. before 9/11. Okay, so this is Pan AM 103. And another one is controversial. It's TWA 800 incident. So on July 17th of 1996, an aircraft of Trans World Airlines, so TWA, exploded over Atlantic Ocean south of Long Island, New York. Shortly after departing JFK, JFK is an airport um, in New York City, right? It killed 230 passengers and crew members. So um, the, the, the report of investigation from the, from the official determined uh, that uh, the reason, the reason uh, of this explosion was the fuel tank of the airplane. There was something wrong with the circuit system of, uh, of the fuel tank and uh, um, there was sparks and uh, that's the reason why um, the fuel tank exploded. So if that was the case, then this TWA 800 incident should not be about aviation security. It was a, a very big problem of a uh, safety issue, but they cannot be certain. So um, investigation of uh, aviation falling or aviation incident uh, can be very difficult, which means that eventually you may not have a, a, a certain conclusion to report, okay? That's the reason why there are conspiracy theories about missile hitting the plane. But, um, sorry, eventually um, no terrorist or any other organizations, no organizations, claim the responsibility for TWA 800 incident. So I would say um, we can consider this as another incident related to aviation security, but we are not quite sure. Because if we're following um, the, 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 the investigation report of the incident, it should be about aviation safety instead of um, the result of a terrorist attack. So. After these two uh, incidents related to United States, right? Pan AM 103 incident, uh, that was certain. That was a, um, that was a result of terrorist attack uh, against the US government and US citizen. TWA 800 um, explosion uh, was not sure. We're not sure about that incident if it is related to um, terrorist attack or it's simply a, a safety, a result of a safety um, issue. But these two explosions, they stimulated a round of crisis driven security response. So it's kind of uh, ironic here. Is uh, we will see a lot of cases uh, in this class later this semester that a lot of transportation um, system security policies and measures they did not e exist until there was something serious happened. Then people realized that, okay, we should use more resources, invest more resources into transportation security systems. So uh, this pattern is called crisis driven. So if nothing happens, nobody cares until something serious is ha uh, just happened. Then people say, okay, we should do this. We should do that. One of the re one of the reason for this pattern is that um, I mean, transportation security is actually very expensive. You have to invest money, right? Time, personnel. You have uh, to make legislation, right? You have to uh, get support from the public because you uh, the government will have to use a lot of money 
from taxpayers, right? You have to get supports from, uh, from media. And all this together, all these resources that have to be invested in transportation security systems to make them work. So I, I believe that's the most important reason, important reason that um, crisis, the, the, the reason for this crisis driven pattern. Okay, so President Clinton appointed the White House Commission on Aviation Security and Safety. And uh, this commission has another name, which is Gore Commission, because Al Gore was the vice president and he was chaired. Uh, uh, he was the chair of this commission. So this commission has another name as Gore Commission in 1996. And this commission existed for one year. And uh, um, from its final report, from its final report and the recommendations um, of the commission recommended uh, several matters uh, the government should uh, should apply to aviation security. Okay, first one is the joint vulnerability assessments by FAA and FBI. They should do vulnerability assessments on aviation security uh, and uh, uh, aviation transportation systems uh, regularly. Okay, second one, there should be more budget for purchase high-tech equipment for aviation security and uh, for research and development of technologies related to aviation security. For example, uh, technology integration for, uh, for airport security, aircraft hardening, okay, and explosives and weapons detection, um, specifically checked baggage um, detection, checkpoints detection, cargo detection. We will, uh, I will provide more examples later this semester, but you should know R&D, research and development, uh, is very important for aviation security, okay? And also additional K-9 units uh, at airports, of course, for, for, for bag and cargo uh, detection for harmful materials urolytic explosives, okay? And uh, a screen company's uh, certification, which means that um, there must be a bar for, 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 screen, for, for private companies to, to join the aviation security system, okay? You have to be certified before you can do business in aviation security realm. Okay, and automated profiling of passengers. This is basically um, a, a, a database, passenger database, um, to profile all passengers who are in the database. So what's your, of course, uh, gender, age, um, ethnicity, um, background, of course, most importantly, uh, criminal background. And this is the foundation for, uh, say, for example, no fly list or white list, right? Or uh, a list for those people who do not need extra um, examining at the checkpoint. That's a white list, right? So you can see that after these two very uh, uh, catastrophic explosions, U.S. government actually tried to do something to enforce, to improve um, aviation security systems in U.S., okay? And uh, there was actually a, a, a high-level commission appointed by the president at the time to address aviation security issues. But after that, this happened, okay? 9-11. Uh, uh, September 11th of 2001, um, the Twin Tower of World Trade Center uh, was, they were, they were attacked by um, terrorists, okay? Okay, I will just stop here. This is the end of this uh, lecture. And in the next lecture, uh, the topic will be um, the transportation security after 9-11. 
which is, again, I need to say, is a watershed for um, transportation security. Okay, thank you. I will see you in the next lecture.